morning, Open Church. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers here and to all our fathers all around the world. Welcome to our Father's Day Sunday service. It's nice to see you all here this morning. And to our virtual community, we welcome you also. Thank you for joining us. Let's prepare our hearts and worship our God together. Please stand for the call to worship and turn to your hymn note, hymn book, number 77. Let's read responsibly. there, say amen. God of our fathers and creator of us all, we treasure our Christian fathers who are guardians of your creation. They have endeavored to be models of faith, freedom, and strength for our families. God of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for our fathers and for the care they have given to your creation. As the Father of Jesus, you, God, are the model of perfect love and nurture. We will ever look to you for guidance and direction. We celebrate Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, who assumed unexpected responsibility with grace and dedication. Abba Father, great teacher, instruct our fathers in the ways of perfect love. We mourn the many fathers lost in the middle passage and those who were ripped away from their families during slavery. We vow to continue the process of reconciliation, the process of recon reconciling black families Biding them together in love. O oh, great physician, teach us how to mend the family ties that have been severed. We remember the wedded hands and gentle spirits of our own fathers. With proud yet humble hearts, they were cast down but not destroyed. In the name of the fathers who have loved and raised us, we give thanks. Our fathers have been warriors, kings, leaders of nations, and pillars of faith in church and society. Strengthen their minds, bodies, and spirits so that they may be faithfully serve you. Help today's fathers, O oh God, to become wiser managers of their households. Black fathers have distinguished themselves in every profession, at home and abroad. They have taught us strength in adversity and have led us in work and at play, in sports, in fishing, in, build, in building and trade. Faith of, of our fathers, fathers living still in spite of dungeon, fire and sword. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to you till death. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this brand new day you have given us. Thank you for bringing us together on this Father's Day in your presence. As we begin our worship service, Lord, celebrating you, our Father. All fathers, also remembering June tea today, Lord. We commit everything and everyone into your hands. The Holy Spirit, come and take control for our flesh on us. May we worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask for your continued blessing and guidance upon all fathers and father figures. We thank you, Lord, and 
thank you for their life. May our worship today be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. know that there's nobody greater you can search all around but you won't find nobody greater I clap it up to the highest mountain I look around could find nobody I went down into the deepest valley I look around that they can find nobody I went down to the deeper sea can find one to compare to your grace to your love mercy nobody greater Nobody greater than you. Listen, I climbed to the highest mountain. I looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley, looked all around, still couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find no one to compare to your grace and love and mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Sing it again. I could. Climb to the highest mountain. I look around. Look around out there, can't find nobody. I went across a deeper sea, can't find one to compare to your grace, your love, mercy. And nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched, I, I searched, searched all, all over. over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody, nobody greater.
Come on, on this Father's Day, I need you to rest, if that makes sense, on your feet. That means stand. Stand up. Rest on your feet, if you are able. We have so much to give thanks to. Amen. Because the Lord is good. Amen. 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 And he is worthy of all the praise. Yes. I'm going to try the tambourine again this Sunday. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. give the Lord a hand clap. He's good today. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, the Lord is good all the time. Call to confession. Each of us has a mandate from God to give our best and bear fruit for God's realm. We who gather in God's house are called to be a faithful community in which all bow humbly before God. Motivated by the love of Christ, this is the time to examine ourselves before our Creator. We have confession in unison. Good. Thank you. 
God is dying for a silent prayer of confession. Amen. We are a new creation. We can live confidently because God is going to us to join us. stand for the glory of God. Prayer of illumination. I'm sorry. Elder Bessie Ward will have a brief report on remembrance of duty. Good morning, church. God bless you all. In commemoration of Juneteenth, I will do a short synopsis of the Emancipation Proclamation first. It's quite an extensive document, but I'm going to do the portion that specifically addresses the freedom of enslaved blacks as follows. On the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within our, any state or any designated part of a state, the people whereof shall be in rebellion against the United States, shall then be thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authorities thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any effort they may make for their actual freedom. The first celebration of Juneteenth took place on June 19, 1866. It is celebrated annually on June 19 to commemorate the emancipation of African slave people, giving them freedom through a span of 1863 to 1865. Although the Emancipation Proclamation was made effective in 1863, it could not be implemented in places still under Confederate control. As a result, the westernmost Confederate state of Texas, enslaved people would not be made free until 1865. Freedom finally came on June 19, 1865, when some 200 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. The Union Army announced that more than 250,000 enslaved black American people in the state of Texas were free by executive decree of President Abraham Lincoln. This day became known as Juneteenth by the newly freed enslaved people in Texas. Juneteenth was recognized as a federal holiday in the year of 2021, when President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law. Our prayer today of commemoration 
Today, we commemorate the end of slavery in America. This day partially reminds us of the progress made. This day also partially reminds us of the progress we have not made. We celebrate the freedom of black lives in our nation. We grieve that we have not correctly reconciled racism in our nation. Lord, you created each person in your image and after your likeness. The two greatest commandments cause us to love you with all our hearts, our soul, and minds. Then to love our neighbor as ourselves. Your love for us motivates us to love each other. If we do not love each other, then ultimately we have not experienced your love. As much as we commemorate and celebrate Juneteenth, we grieve this day. We mourn that our black brothers and sisters have not been loved as our neighbors. We mourn that our black brothers and sisters have been treated less than created in the image and likeness of our God throughout. So Lord, we confess our sins and repent. The healing and reconciliation we desire comes from the gospel. On Juneteenth this year, we ask you to guide our nation. May the news May the good news of the gospel motivate us to love each other. May the ideals of our words match the practice of our lives. May our fresh empowerment of your spirit unite us together. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear your will and leading to your way. God of all people, all nations, on this day of freedom, we celebrate triumphantly all people of goodwill. We might, that we might walk arm in arm together in peace and harmony, loving one another as God has loved us. Amen. Prayer of illumination. Holy and gracious God, may your Holy Spirit give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, which is of his glorious inheritance among us, the greatness of his power for those who believe. Now let us welcome our first lesson here. Good morning. So today's reading is from Psalms 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart desires and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him for only his holy heaven. With the saving might of his right hand, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. This is the word of the Lord. If we don't 
did I share, but uh, if there's anything you don't like, blame it on God. Amen. <laughs> um, join me, if you will, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 22, which I'll read for you verses 1 through 14. I'm reading from the New International Version. similar to these. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood, for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here. Isaac said, But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
Lord have mercy. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld uh, from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over, took the ram, and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this another opportunity. We ask now that you would step forward, that we might step back, that we might receive a word from you. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. We stand as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Fill us until we overflow. Bless now these thy people. Bless now this your church. Bless now this your message. And please, God, don't forget about the messenger. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of he who died that we might live, and the church said, Amen. Of course, as always, we welcome those who are viewing in virtually, and for all of us today on this Father's Day, and I would be amiss if I did not wish all of you happy Father's Day, and may the Lord continue to bless you in ways that only He knows. I want to talk for these few moments allotted to me from this thought. A blueprint for parents and children to set them free. A blueprint for parents and children to set them free. Whether you realize it or not, we are around an intersection of three significant dates in the month of June. Last Sunday, although it's not it's not stated as often. The second Sunday of June is supposed to be International Youth Day. Today, as we know, it is Father's Day. And then on Wednesday, as you have already heard mentioned, we're going to be celebrating uh, the federal holiday of Juneteenth. Amen. Along with me. I'm not going to be along. Uh, it's a federal holiday that has been recently added to the calendar. And on that day back in June 19, 1865, when Major General Gordon Granger led his troops into and ordered the final slaves uh, to be freed because of the emancipation proclamation which had been put in place some two and a half years earlier. Lord have mercy. These three events intertwine to create a solid principle that we all should attempt to embrace and emulate because they can help us to remain close to God and have access to that which only comes from him. First, let's deal with Father. The role of fathers has become more difficult as time goes by. We desire to follow the advice of men and not follow the ways of our Heavenly Father. Our youth have become a part of the problem. They have fallen under the same demise, especially with the advent of social media and the Internet. They are affected by everyone except their parents 
and our Heavenly Father. There is a book that is out now. The book is called Bad Therapy. Why the Kids Aren't Growing Up. It's written by Abigail Schreier. And in it, she declares that most children who go to college nowadays, when they leave home, they have never, ever been told no. And as a result, they do not know how to deal with failure. This sets up an unrealistic expectation of life and what will come their way. This can lead to anxiety, depression, and in some cases, withdrawal from others and from society as a whole. As far as Juneteenth is concerned, uh, for many, it was a day that they found out they were free. Now I realize that different denominations have different uh, rituals, but in the tradition where I grew up, this is where the term watch night came from. That on New Year's Eve, we would go to church around 10 o'clock and we would wait till midnight for the new year to come. And as we have become more progressive and more cultural, we've gotten away from waiting for our God. Have we got a witness? Am I in the wrong church this morning? And we must realize uh, that there is a necessity in waiting on God. Because God is a part of how we get our freedom. And you do realize that freedom is a state of mind. The Bible says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And there are many people who are walking around. They may not have chains on them, but they are bound because they are not free. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, I need you to understand this morning that if we want to be what God wants us to be, that the blueprint for it lies here in this text. Moreover, Anything you ever need, you'll find between the pages of Genesis and Revelation. Can I get a witness? So really, this text begins in chapter 12. Now don't get upset. I'm not going to be up here that long. But I want you to understand that when God begins with you, that if you're willing to follow him, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he'll always be there to help you grow in his name. Somebody say amen. amen. So in chapter 12, God calls Abram. Yes, I said Abram. He promises to bless him and to make him a great nation. He promises him offspring, land, and blessings. And then in chapter 15, he speaks to him again uh, just to reassure Abram of his promises. Unlike in his previous encounter, Abram does not remain silent. Abram's reply to Yahweh demonstrates his frustration at Yahweh's delay in fulfilling what Abram views as the first necessary step in making him a great nation, providing him with a son and an heir. Abraham complains to God that because he has no children, that his only heir will be for one of his servants, Eleazar of Damascus. Yahweh's answer to Abram addresses his concerns by, clar by clar clarifying that his heir will be his biological son and 
that his offspring will eventually be as numerous uh, as the stars. Now, unless I go too fast, can we talk for a minute? Abraham was close to 100. Sister girl was 90. They had no children. And the Bible has already told us that Sarah was barren. Now, when I started university at Rutgers, I was a pre-med major. And there's some things that are true that you can't change. If you get to a certain point, you may no longer be able to bear children. But here God is telling Abram, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I'm so thankful that God can bless you even when you think he can't. Amen. So once again, in chapter 17, Yahweh comes to Abraham. He reiterates his promise. And then here, he gives him a new name. He changes his name from Abram to Abraham. He is our, fa our father of many nations. Let us go then to the text for today. Now, he's waited all this time. And now, he has a son. And the word of God tells us that, and, and God is, is strange sometimes. Because here, he keeps repeating that Isaac is his only son. But because they couldn't wait Abraham has another son. But I need to let you know, don't try to figure it out for God. God can take care of things on his own. Amen. And so the Bible says that God comes to test Abraham. It is the word nasan in the Hebrew, which means to test. And so he says to Abraham, Abraham, I need you to go to Mount Moriah and I need you to sacrifice your only son. Notice, Abraham doesn't complain. He simply prepares for the journey. They leave. It takes three days. And they get to the bottom of Mount Moriah and he leaves his servants there. And Abraham and Isaac begin the journey up the mountain. Now I know it's 2024, but one thing I appreciate about Brother Isaac, actually two. One, he shows that Abraham had taught him prior, because he knew if you're going to have a sacrifice, you had to have wood, you had to have fire, and you had to have a sacrifice. When he asked his father about the sacrifice, Abraham simply responded, the Lord will provide. Second thing I appreciate about Isaac, because I must be honest, if it had been me, I don't know if I would have been so cool. They get to the place of the sacrifice. Abraham prepares the sacrifice and then puts his son on the sacrifice. His son never said a mumbling word. Lord have mercy. That would not have been me. And just before Abraham was about to come down with the sword, the angel of the Lord stops him and shows him a ram in the bush. My point to you today is that as we examine all three parts of this, is that this text always will serve 
as a blueprint for our lives if we're willing to follow God. And the first thing I want you to remember is simply fear God. Reverence Him. Emulate Him in all that He is. Not only fear God, but obey God. Two cannot lead. One must be willing to follow. Give your all. And thirdly, give your all to God. Whatever you think you need, he has already prepared to give back to you. Chinese philosopher Leo Tzu says the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The blessings of the covenant to the Israelites was all achieved because one man believed and one man obeyed. And since God is no respecter of person, we all have the same opportunity. Just believe and obey. I close with this. A young lad waited for his father to come home. He asked his father for $20. His father asked him why. He said he couldn't tell him. His father only had $20 on him. But because he loved his son, he gave him his last $20. What he didn't realize was, afterwards his son came to him with a jar full of coins that would equal $20. His father said, son, what are you doing? He said, well, I saved my money. And there's this toolbox I want to buy. It's $20. But the owner wouldn't take my coins. He said I needed a $20 bill. And so his father gave him the 20 But he wouldn't take the coins from the boy. He said, put them back in your room. The next day after school, the boy was so excited. He went home, got his wagon, had his dad's $20, and went to the hardware store. When he got there, the man saw him, smiled at him, put the toolbox in his wagon, and the boy held out the 20, and he said, I don't need that. He said, your father was here earlier today. He paid for the wagon, for the toolbox, and you can take it on home. The boy left smiling, not because his father had paid for the toolbox, but because he had a godly father who would take care of all his need. And as we celebrate Father's Day and even celebrate our youth and celebrate our freedom, realize that whatever we do, for God, he will prepare and give us everything we need. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. God bless you. Thank you so much, Reverend John, for that message. Please stand for your permission of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under precious body, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Father God, we thank you once again for all that we are and all that we do. You are such an awesome God. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being our Father. And we thank you for all fathers represented. Those who stood in the gap, those who bless us every day. Continue to bless them and supply their needs. We ask that you bless us all. We need you more today than we've ever needed you before. Bless your name, God. You are an awesome God. Bless this church. Continue to shower your blessings in the most grand way. Bless every family, oldest to the youngest, youngest to the oldest. Bless those in hospitals. Bless those that are bereaved. Bless those behind prison walls. Bless us all today. Lord, we truly need you. You are our God. And beyond and besides these, there is none other. Bless us today. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. And all God's people say, amen. And now, as you share with your disciples, we share today by repeating, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. God bless you. Now let us lay aside on the first day of the week. And now may the grace of God, the gift of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you today, henceforth, and forevermore.